Okay, in this video we're going to look at an example involving the third isomorphism theorem. So let's see what that says first. Okay, so let's suppose that N is a normal subgroup of H and N is a normal subgroup of G. And then H is a normal subgroup of G. So we've got some sort of picture like this. So we have G, H uh, lies within G, and N lies within H. Now if N is a normal subgroup of H and H is a normal subgroup of G, it does not automatically mean that N is a su normal subgroup of G. That relationship is not transitive. So we're assuming that in addition to this picture right here. Okay, so then our result is the following. So we have G mod H is isomorphic to G mod N mod H mod N. So in underlying this, we have that H mod N is a natural no normal subgroup of G mod N. Okay, so let's look at an example. Okay, so the example we're going to work with is one of the simplest, but also one of the most useful and pretty illuminating. So we'll take our large group to be G, then H is going to be M times Z. So we know every subgroup of Z is of the form M times Z. In other words, it's a cyclic subgroup generated by M. And then we need a subgroup of H. So again, that's going to be a cyclic subgroup of a cyclic group, so that's going to be cyclic generated by M times N, in other words, MNZ. So now, applying the third isomorphism theorem, so we have G mod H has got to be isomorphic to G mod N mod uh, H mod N. So expanding out the left-hand side, this is um, Z mod MZ. So in a previous video, we proved that that is isomorphic to the group ZM. And then over here, this is going to be uh, Z mod MNZ. Um, and then mod out by MZ mod MNZ. Okay, good. So now let's go ahead and try to get a handle on that right-hand side. So maybe the first thing that we'll notice is that uh, Z mod MNZ is going to be isomorphic to Z, M, N, okay? So that takes care of the quote-unquote numerator of this right-hand side. Now we need to think about that denominator of the right-hand side. So we're going to do that by looking at the following homomorphism. So let's define a homomorphism from uh, M, Z into uh, Z, M, N, and how we'll do that is uh, we will send uh, phi of m x. So notice everything over here is a multiple of m, and we'll send that to the equivalence class m x. Okay. And notice it's pretty easy to see that the image of phi inside of z m n will be the cyclic subgroup generated by m. So I'll write that in the following way. It's the cyclic subgroup inside z m n that is uh, generated by the equivalence class of m. And then now let's look at the kernel of phi. So the kernel of phi is going to be everything that's mapped to zero. In other words, this equivalence class needs to be a multiple of mn. But notice that this equivalence class is a multiple of mn. What we have is that if you're in the kernel, then you are a multiple of mn inside of this group. In other words, the kernel is um, mn times z. Now, putting this all together using the first isomorphism theorem, we know the image of phi is equal to mz mod the kernel of phi. In other words, mz mod the kernel, which is mnz, has got to be isomorphic to this cyclic subgroup uh, generated by m, which is inside of zmn. Okay, great. So what that tells us is that we can extend this off to the right to say that this is isomorphic to ZMN mod the cyclic subgroup generated by M. Okay, good. So I'm going to go ahead and clean up the board, uh, take this final result, and then we'll do an example. Okay, so we just proved using the third isomorphism theorem that ZM is isomorphic to ZMN mod the cyclic subgroup generated by M. So now I'm going to reword this a little bit, um, and I'm going to reuse um, M and N at kind of as needed. And so let's suppose that D is a divisor of N, okay? 
Then we could say that Zn mod D is going to be isomorphic to Zd. Okay, great. So uh, now let's look at a little example of this. So if we take Z15, so the divisors of 15 are three and five. So let's say we mod out by the cyclic subgroup generated by three. So uh, by this result that we've just proven, that's gonna be isomorphic to Z3. And so now let's recall real quick what this cyclic subgroup generated by three looks like inside of Z15. So that's going to be made up of 0, 3, 6, 9, and 12. And then obviously we don't need any more elements because 15 is equal to 0. Um, okay, great. And then we could also do Z15 mod 5. And that's going to be isomorphic to Z5. And here we have um, the cyclic subgroup generated by 5 is going to be made up of 0, 5, and 10. And just by the order of the group, we can see that this is true. Notice that uh, this cyclic subgroup has five elements, which makes this quotient group have 15 divided by five or three elements. And we know the quotient group of a cyclic group is cyclic. So that means this is going to be a cyclic group of three elements. And so that's got to be Z3. And furthermore, this cyclic subgroup generated by 5 has three elements. 15 divided by 3 is 5. Uh, quotient group of a cyclic group is cyclic, so that means we get a cyclic group with five elements over here. So now uh, I'm gonna clean up the board and we're gonna look at one more result related to this. Okay, so the last thing that we're gonna look at that's built off of this is the following claim that we'll prove, and that is Zn mod the cyclic group generated by M is going to be isomorphic to Z, uh, the GCD of M and N. So, uh, Let's see how this proof will go. This proof will follow from this fact. So we'll want to show that uh, the cyclic subgroup generated by M is the same thing as the cyclic subgroup generated by uh, the GCD of M and N. Okay, great. So uh, let's see how that goes. Okay, so we'll do this by double containment. So we'll first do it by containment in this direction. Okay, good. And uh, notice, uh, let's go ahead and set the GCD of M and N equal to D. And so here I'm writing GCD of M and N is equal to D. Okay, great. And so notice that uh, D is a divisor of M. Uh, and we know that because it's the GCD of M and N, so it's got to be a divisor of M and N. So what this tells us is that M equals uh, D times K for some K um, in the natural numbers. Okay, good. But uh, from that, it immediate fo immediately follows that the cyclic subgroup generated by M, Mx, where X runs through all of the elements of Z. Recall we've got an additive cyclic subgroup here, so we're using a multiplicative notation instead of exponential nota notation. In other words, repeated addition is multiplication. Um, instead of uh, repeated multiplication, which is exponentiation. But now the next thing that we can do here is write this as uh, D times K times X as X runs through all of Z. And then notice that this is going to be a subgroup of the cyclic subgroup generated by D. So notice we've got the cyclic subgroup generated by M is a subgroup of the cyclic subgroup generated by D. Now uh, let's do the reverse containment. And then uh, we'll do that in the following way. So let's notice by uh, the extended Euclidean algorithm, we can write uh, the GCD, which we're calling D, of M and N equals um, M uh, A plus N B for A and B two integers. Great. But now uh, we're going to look at this inside of, um, <clears throat> let's see, Zn. That turns into the equation given by uh, D equals Ma for some A, which is an integer. Okay. But then, using the exact same idea that we have up here, it follows that the cyclic subgroup generated by D is a subgroup of the cyclic subgroup generated by M. So let's see what we've got 
a cyclic subgroup generated by M is a subgroup of the one generated by D and vice versa. But together, this shows uh, what we wanted to show. In other words, the cyclic subgroup generated by M is equal to the cyclic subgroup generated by D. But then putting that together with the previous result, we have our claim proved. And that's a good place to end this video.